I would like to choose like a, a, a refrain for the evening. A refrain for the evening that is the one that the Jesus was saying to Peter. And uh, since we are, we are reaching the end of the Gospel of Mark, so you know that the end usually when the poor Jesus is being crucified. So, and you remember, so this that we read today is like the last word of Jesus, no? the last teaching. And uh, so the moment it was coming, he was saying to his apostles, you know, they will come, they will take me, they will kill me, they will put on the cross, but we resurrect the last day. And Peter was saying, no, 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 that is not possible. So it's a kind of moment of tension in the community. Is Jesus saying that something important is coming up, but they're still a little confused. They are feeling that the moment is coming. And you remember that that night after the Last Supper, Jesus brought with him again Peter, James, and John and pray. He went to pray and uh, he was saying, you know, after praying, when he went back, I find that the Peter and James and John sleeping. So he said to Peter, you remember the famous sentence? So he came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. <laughs> So this, this night, I want to use this refrain time to time, say, you know, Peter, awake, awake, keep awake and pray so that you don't fall in temptation. <laughs> because the spirit is ready, but the, 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 the flesh, the flesh is weak. This will be my refrain tonight. Just to enter in that moment, again, you may say, why Jesus chose only John, James, and Peter. You remember, we, we spoke about that uh, for the transfiguration. And we say, yes, there were 12 the apostles, but every time he chooses these three, because we share already, you, you can watch again the teaching on the transfiguration, because they, they were the one closer to the heart of Jesus. Because if you see the other apostle, no, we say like Thomas, who was still in doubt, you remember until the end, they say, if you don't put the finger here, I don't believe. Judas was completely messed up because he think that the, the Christ, the Messiah who come, is like the one who will conquer nation, who will kick out the Romans, so like a, an, an, an earth king, earthly king. So he was completely messed up. You remember, in the last night, he even betrayed him. This is a beautiful image also for us, because when we think, many of us, we are following Jesus, but somebody really give the heart to the Lord. Some, like Thomas, like Matthews, like the other, yeah, interested in Jesus, they are following him, they are trying to be good, but sometimes they are in their own way, so they are not completely giving their heart to the Lord. They have even given their time, we'll say, but not the heart. And this is so clear that Jesus just called these three people who have completely given the heart to him. So even in, in the glorious moment of the transfiguration, but even in difficult moments, he want them close to him. So this is beautiful. So the refrain, Jesus say, hey, Peter, Peter, keep awake, keep awake. Don't fall in temptation because the spirit is ready, but the flesh is not. The flesh is weak. Okay, so we go back, and um, because I know that my friends sometimes they get uh, tired listening or even doing Lectio Continua, I keep on reading the gospel, that instead of reading, I will just summarize. So at the end of the chapter 11, we have the Jesus authority is questioned. So if you have the Bible with you, you can see Mark chapter 11 at the end, starting in the verse 27. 
So, just to summarize to you so you don't need to read, the, so they're saying the Pharisee and the scribe say, Jesus, but with which authority are doing this? I mean, he was doing miracles, remember? He was multiplying the bread, healing the sick. So instead of to think, you know, maybe God is among us, we are still thinking, okay, with which authority? But Jesus didn't say to them, okay, I will not tell you, but say, okay, I will tell you with which authority if you answer me. So you remember, so <laughs> he said to them, so the baptism of John was coming from heaven or also from human origin? So they talk among themselves and they think, okay, if we say from heaven, he will say why we don't believe it. If we say that it's coming from men, <laughs> they will kill us, the people around us, because they were in the temple. So many people believe that John was sent by God. So you see this kind of scribe, Pharisee, they're always looking uh, just uh, to, do not have trouble. They look sometimes like us. They don't want trouble. I mean, try to understand from where is coming the authority of Jesus. Of course, from God, doing healing, miracles, multiplying bread. Something is there. And you know, they correctly, <laughs> they are, how do you say, they do say, those people, they always, just to don't get wrong, they say, you know, we don't know. Okay, if you don't know, Jesus say, you know, I don't know either. I will not tell you from which authority. It's very nice, the way of speaking and the wisdom of Jesus. So, after we end in the chapter 12, and there is another famous parable that all of you know. But again, it would be nice if you can read through a thingy. I will summarize again, so that we little by little can finish the Gospel of Mark. And there is the parable of the wicked tenants, you know. Uh, Jesus say, a man planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a pit for the vine press, and built up a watchtower. Then he leased to the tenants and went to another country. <laughs> okay, so he built up a beautiful vineyard. Also, he built up a watchtower. You may ask, hey, why, there, why there is a watchtower in the vineyard? Okay, maybe to see if some robber is coming. But really, there is a need. I mean, somebody can steal some grapes. It's still okay. <laughs> but if you think, you know, adapting this parable to us, Start to think. I will let you know after. So, and you know the story. The story is, you know, give it to this tenant. He went far away. And when the time of the fruits come, he come and send some servant to collect the fruit. And you remember the story. Some of the servants, they beat and they kick away. Some they insult and they kill them. So some they beat, some they killed, like the prophet that the Lord sent along the story, you know. At the very end, he say, you know, the boss will send also his son, saying they will have respect to the son. But actually, you know, they even took the son, they killed him. Okay, you, this parable for now is very clear, and actually was also for the Pharisee and the scribes in that time. It was very clear. Thing, the Lord has built up a vineyard for us. And when it's time, he's coming back to ask for us, from us, the fruits. But instead of giving fruits to him, we kill his servant. We kill even his own son. So, what are these fruits? If we think for us, that this parable speak today for us. The Lord is giving us so many beautiful gifts, charisma. Our, even our wisdom, intelligence, our skill in music, and many things. But when he's coming for us, for asking fruits, who is giving fruits to him? We are giving for ourselves. Again, we are talking about our selfishness. So like this tenant, instead of giving back the fruit, because they have a vineyard, they have a lot of money for free, 
the Lord made everything for, for, for them, so why not give them a part to, to the one who built up everything? No, instead they want to keep everything from themselves, like we are doing now. All our, so all our life, all our gift for ourselves. Why give it to the Lord in the time? Why give it to the Lord? For example, I prefer watch uh, a volleyball match. <laughs> Why I need to offer to him fruits or praise? Give thanks to him because he's great. I can enjoy time watching him a video, a movie. So we, we are losing this uh, fidelity to the Lord. Let's say he's asking us fruit because he gives us a good gift. At least he's asking us for something back. We, we say many times, what he likes most is the praise and worship, where we give a fruit, the fruit of our lips that give thanks to him, the thing that he loves the most. But we stop. We stop to give him these fruits. We stop to read these words. No. We have the vineyard with us. We have the life with us. And we do whatever we want with our life. It's our life. Really, it's our life? The Lord give you this life. And do you don't give him a little bit to him? Once a week for the same time of praise, worship. Or at the Sunday Mass. Or some moment in your day when you get closer to him. No. We kill his prophets. We kick out them. We kill even the sun. Wow. If you think that in this way. And the watchtower is very interesting. Because for me the Lord has built also watchtower in our life. You know. We shared last time about confession. Why, why nobody is going also to confession? Or there are spiritual guides that can help us to get stronger in our faith. When we are discouraged like Peter. When we have, like Elijah, that we are falling down on the way, and we ask for a spiritual guide, for more grace in the confession. So we have like a watchtower, foresee the enemy and overcome. But still, we don't use it. So I say again, the refrain. Awake, 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 Peter. Don't sleep, because the spirit is ready, but the flesh is so weak. Don't fall in temptation. Awake, Peter. Awake. Okay. So we pass now to what is verse 13. The question about paying taxes. You know, even this question is very famous. Maybe you will remember, no? Uh, just to always the Pharisee, the scribe, because they were trying to find some excuse to kill him, to accuse him. So they ask, okay, is is correct to give pay the tax to Caesar? You remember the famous sentence, Jesus say, okay, bring me a coin. Let me see what is in the coin. Oh, which image is there? The image on Caesar. So give to Caesar what is of Caesar, give to God what is of God. Oops. So <laughs> nobody know how to answer, to reply to Jesus. Actually, they were amazed at what he was saying. Okay, what does it mean this for us? Because every time we talk about politics uh, and Caesar, uh, you know, everybody is always saying, you know, politics is so, so dirty that I don't want any. So, we were saying many times, if we give the, so leave the political to the dirty people, we'll be more and more dirty. <laughs> we are called also to be active in our society. So, give to the society what this the society. If we can make it better the society, why don't get involved in the society? Yes. And give it to God what is of God. He asks a little. He asking us what? The Sunday Mass, we said. He asking time where we stop with him in the desert. He will speak to our heart, he said tonight during our prayer. So let's have this moment of desert time to time where he can speak in our heart. And let's give him the fruit that he like most. Let's stop and contemplate his beauty and say how great he is. Keep 
housekeeping or there's the question about the resurrection. Even this is a very funny one because the Sadducees, they, they don't believe in the resurrection. So they brought the example of that woman that married seven husbands because they say, you know, the first husband died according to the law of Moses, the brother of the dead husband, okay, marry her, but after he died also, and the, the, the third brother came in, he died also, and so on. Seven brothers <laughs> all died. At the very end, even her died. So, and they asked Jesus, so at the very end, this woman, when he's in heaven, with which husband will be? And Jesus was a little hungry to them and said, but guys, you have already read the Bible? Really, you understand the word of God? What are you reading there? Because when you will die, there will be no marriage. We will be all like angels in heaven. We don't need to marry. We are all brothers and sisters. Jesus said to them, Is not this the reason you are wrong, that you know neither the scripture nor the power of God? He also started to say, you know, just to explain to them that after this life, there is a resurrection, there is life, there is a God, this is a God of the living, not the dead. Say, you remember when God say, I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He, he is God, not of the dead, but of the living. You are quite wrong. So he was explaining also how to read the scripture. God is a God of the living. So, sure, after this life in this world, there is an heaven with him, and we don't marry. So, why wasting so <laughs> much time, attention in the worldly thing, instead to build up the heavenly thing? Since we, we will stay with him forever, so how we don't learn more, more to be heart to heart with the Lord, like Peter, John, and James did. This is it. They were so close to his heart that Jesus was so close to them. So why don't take this time to get closer to him? And when we fail, we have the Holy Spirit that can help us. It's just if we want. If Israel, you would listen in this last Sunday Mass, we have this same, this psalm that I like. Uh, if today you will listen to the voice of the Lord. Da, da, da. But instead we listen to so many voices instead of that voice. You know? Okay. Let's try to finish the chapter 12. So there is the first commandment. This is more easy because another guy, another describe, uh, asked Jesus, okay, in that case, which one is the first commandment? And Jesus said, the first is here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And this time the scribe was so honest, saying, oh, you answer well. Indeed, this, uh, yeah, this is the most important. We have so many laws, we are so legalist in many things, but the most important is this, the Lord is one, the Lord is first. We need to love him with all our heart, mind, soul, with our strength. And to love our neighbors instead of only focus on ourselves. So if Jesus said, you know, man, you are not far away from the kingdom of God. Finally, some scribe, you know, that is seeing the light. <laughs> and Jesus recognized to them, you are not far. In this time, this sentence, uh, love your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. It's so close to me in this time because we're starting in the confirmation. So again, I'm saying to my students, you know, don't love the Lord only with your mind. 
Because when we do the catechism, people start to learn about God. Oh, okay, God do this, do that, God is this, God is that. So sometimes we have some, a kind of knowledge of the Lord. But he say also, with all your heart, once again, if you see your, know your heart, your spirit, ah, you are missing half of you. If your heart don't participate in this love of the Lord, so for that to say, love the Lord with all your soul, many people get lost in that. Say, how I love the Lord with all my soul. What does that mean? <laughs> Actually, it's beautiful, if you think. Because with your mind, you can reach, okay, I think about God, yes, through signs, I see that it's so wonderful, so surely exists, okay. He did this, he did that, okay. With my heart, yeah, also put in my emotion, but soul, soul is something that we are missing. So, experience God. Experience God. This is a point that some people are missing. Missing experience of God. So tonight the Lord say, I will bring him in the desert, I will speak to him. For example, the desert, when you are in the desert, the God speak to you, is a kind of soul experience. You experience the Lord. And that will change your life. Because when you have heard about the Lord, yeah, you more or less know, but never move you. You need to do a personal experience of him. Your soul needs to do the experience that He exists. For that, every time I invite people, not only here at Catechism, but to participate in a group that is alive. Like when we do a moment of praise and worship, in the highest moment of worship, you feel really His, his presence. So experience that. We need that. So love the Lord your God with all your mind, but also with your soul, you need to do experience of God. If you don't have experience of God, looking around. You know, many saints, after the conversion, they were looking for, for some spiritual father, or some convent, or some area where they can experience God. Because they know that there is more, there is more, but why I don't feel it? Why I don't see in my community? Okay, go in another community. And you will, until you will find. Because you need to know your Lord with all your mind. You told your soul you need to experience his existence with all your heart. That is the answer of our heart, like did Peter, James, and John. And the strength, the strength come last, but it's so important for that fidelity. Like we say, let's be faithful to God. Let's give the fruit back to him every week. Let's spend the time in praise and worship for him because he's worth it. If he lasts with so many gifts and fruits, let's give him back these fruits to him. So, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your heart, with all your strength. Because again, dear friend, the spirit is ready, like the twelve apostles, but he chose only three to stay with him. So the spirit is ready, but the flesh is weak. So stay awake to don't fail so that you will not follow in temptation. Stay awake. Stay awake with the Lord. Peter, awake. 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 I think we can finish here so we can be in time to meet with the other people. And we can keep on in the future. But I think you got the point, really. Often in our faith, we fell asleep. We fell asleep. So like today, we are saying, remember, in that, time, in that case, use your strength. Use your strength to be faithful to the Lord. Try to love the Lord only with your mind. They say, ah, He exists, okay. But with your heart, offering your heart closer to Him, spending time to him, with Him. And also with your soul. If you need time to do experience with him because you are too dry, look around. There are places. Again, I say a uh, short announcement. This uh, uh, like uh, a school uh, for youth uh, formation school like Santa Teresa and Bruno is starting uh, soon in January in Hinton. 
So if we are a youth like 18 and up, you like to spend the time with the Lord and experience with the Lord closer to Him, consider this. I can give you more details about that. So I will be in Hindon like a six months uh, training formation course and after that you can be part of the community or as the Lord call you. So thank you very much for your attention for tonight and again in the live chat if you have some question you can write there so I can answer straight away or if you write after in the comments I can reply in the comments. Don't worry.